here look at what we have had four of our five games decided by by five points or less well san jose has been a wonderful wonderful place to be not for not only the teams but uh our crew and all of the fans over 15,000 here in every session awesome Our officials for today's game, Tom Eads, Patrick Driscoll, and Mike Sanzier. Washington dressed in purple, New Mexico in white. A.J. Hardiman wins the tip. Bill McDonald controls and we're underway from Northern California. Interesting point guard matchup. Isaiah Thomas small and quick. Darice Gary thick and strong. Washington defeated the Big East. Uh, kept Golden Eagles Thursday. New Mexico getting right to work with a 2 0 lead. Abdul Gaddy with a floater in the paint. What else would you expect from the Huskies? <laughs> well, the Huskies are a team that score quick. Whether you score or don't score, they're getting up the floor fast. Washington 25 wins overall on the season, eight straight and have won 13 of the last 15 coming in. Hobson into the corner, here's Roman Martinez drills the three. The Lobos started very slowly Thursday, different story here. Ryan Amining behind the defense, lays it in. The three-quarter court pass is something to behold. Three games in a row, I have watched Washington in person, and they throw it three-quarter court better than any team I've ever seen. It's the Reese Gary. Those huge free throws down the stretch Thursday called here for the offensive foul. We are going to have action in this game. Both teams love to get up and down the floor. Washington is deeper. Look at this pass. This is a half court, but they do this three-quarter court as well. And frequently, the guys on the end of this are Pondexter and Matthew Bryant Hamming, the bigger guys who can really run for the Huskies. Here's Isaiah Thomas threw that half court pass a moment ago. He hit that three quarter court shot the other night that did not count. But boy, the little guy is a spark plug for Lorenzo Romar. Here's Paul Dexter. Hesitation dribble, misses in tight. Brian Ammoning, a huge performance Thursday, a load on the glass. And he'll step to the line for two. We mentioned Darrington Hobson injuring his wrist here Thursday. Here it was on the drive to the basket. Takes a nasty spill his left side trying to break his ball Bob you know, certainly a scary moment for the Lobos fans underwent x-rays they were negative no structural damage and here he is today showing some inner fortitude yep and and you know he draws favorable comparison to Evan Turner because he leads his team in scoring rebounding and assists he's been very very good all season long but especially of late Hobson trying to become the first Lobo to ever lead his team in those three statistical categories in one season. Yeah, he's spinning pass in for Hobson, swatted out of bounds. That's Justin Holiday. A lot of length on this Washington team. At every position except point guard. Long arms. Stay on your feet until the offensive guy goes up. Justin Holiday, all Pac-10 defense. And then here's the comparison. Take a look at the right and the left, Evan Turner and Hobson doing wondrous things for their teams this season. Evan Turner, of course, most people's player of the year in college basketball. Here's Roman Martinez, the senior from El Paso, Texas. Incredible career he has had in Albuquerque. Just over two minutes gone by. Huskies down a point, here's Pondexter getting comfortable scored 14 of his 18 points Thursday in the second half none more than that last one with 1.7 seconds to win it there's a quarter three got it that's Philip McDonald fireworks in San Jose and speaking of fireworks the Huskies getting down the floor holiday to the basket three-quarter court pass again these big guys can run can't they we're tied at eight galore at the start here's Gary driving Martinez very tight quarters misses the three and holiday clears passes to Pondex who's standing in play shuffle pass into Brian Ammoning and a foul charge for the Lobos what a difference in a game New Mexico in their last game against Montana played against two post players who could not run like this 
There were stationary type guys, 6'11", 275. Quali was the guy who did the most damage. In this game, they better get back fast because these guys can run. Here's Paul Baxter. Out of Thomas. Outside shot. Rebounded by Martinez. Here's Maurice Garrett. Sixteen forty to play. Hobson will try a deep three and puts it in. Hobson looks fired up to start. I guess the Mexico with a three-point lead. I guess the wrist is okay, Spiro. Certainly looked that way on that shot. And a turnover. Isaiah Thomas had it in his hands, and it belongs to New Mexico. The three-point shooting of New Mexico very much in evidence in this game already. It is their chief offensive weapon. Second offensive weapon is the passing of Darrington Hobson. Three for five already. Here's Hobson. Nothing like a deep three to get that wrist loosened up. <laughs> Great matchup between Hobson and Holiday to start. Holiday, all Pac-10 defensive team. Only five guys on it. He's one of them. Holiday, the Chatsworth, California native. Hobson, dangerous cross-court pass. And then Martinez throws it to the backcourt. McDonald can't save. And Washington will get it back. Boy, these two teams getting after it to start here in San Jose. Darrington Hobson, a question mark no more with that left wrist sprain. Stay with us. Lobos head coach Steve Alford talked about the sluggish offensive start Thursday. Simply not the case so far in this game. <laughs> not at all. Both teams racing up and down the floor. They have been good in different ways. The Lobos, three of their four baskets from downtown. On the other hand, everything with running and close to the basket for Washington. The big guys are out running the Lobos. Big guys, four baskets, no threes for Washington. Four baskets, three threes for New Mexico. The Lobos by Thursday night and that win over Montana, just five of 20 from three-point distance. They look like a different team, don't they? I mean, they look like the number eight ranked team in the nation in this game. Huskies inbounded. It'll take a lot more to intimidate the Washington Huskies down three. Told you they came back from 15 down in the second half. How about this, a two-three zone on the part of the Lobos. Now they switch to man to man. Nobody got the message on Isaiah Thomas. He was wide, wide open. Thomas finds the soft spot, and we're tied at 11. Darrington Hobson, born in Las Vegas, among the most versatile players in the country, and right on cue, the no look lead pass for A.J. Hardiman. That was a thing of beauty. Pondexter barrels into the defender, Martinez, and a charging foul call. They go 2-3 zone. They're confused. Now they try to go man-to-man, -man, and on the switch up, Isaiah Thomas is left wide open. And how about this beautiful pass? Darrington Hobson, boy, does he have vision or what? So tall, he can see over most defenders at 6'9". Indeed. So five minutes gone by, New Mexico holding and a two-point lead. Here's Hobson, acting as a point forward early in this game. They spread the floor. All five guys outside the three-point line. Shot block at seven. Here's McDonald. Therese Gary against Benoit Overton slipping underneath the defense. It's a four-point game. That guy's way good. First team Mountain West All-Conference Gary. New Mexico 30 wins in the season coming in. Whatever little hitches to their game they had Thursday just has not been evident tonight. There's Brian Aminen off the dribble drive and set up by Thomas. Thomas can find seams in any kind of defense. Wiggles in there. Lock continues to run. Six minutes gone by. Switch two with the bounce pass. Those hops in again, finding Hardiman. Well, if you're A.J. Hardiman, so much talent on the perimeter, you're going to get your chances inside. The strength of Gary evident on this drive and the speed of Isaiah and his passing ability at this end. Two point guards doing it in different ways. 
one assisting, one scoring. That's going to be a very good matchup to keep your eye on. Bob, you're a coach. You know, people talk about peaking at the right time. This was a Huskies team that began the season ranked uh, as high as the top 15 in some polls earlier. They've won eight straight, and boy, they're playing now like people expected them to be playing back in November. I agree with that, and, and I think the Pac-10 took it uh, publicity-wise on a hit, and a lot of people felt the league was way, way down, but Washington just kept on kept keeping on. Of course, Cal won their game against Louisville in the tournament, so uh, both of these teams trying to keep up the reputation of the West Coast. Pac-10, as Bob mentioned, just two bids in the tournament. Boy, have they represented themselves well so far. Offensive rebound, Pondexter puts it back in off the window. Length, big time length. He could stand on the floor and jump on his tippy toes and get to the rim. Bob, what shooting by both of these teams? 13 of 19 combined. By Martinez in the corner, patiently awaiting for some space. They guard his check in. Offensive rebound, Hardeman. They send him backwards. Interior defense that was Darnell Gantz. Thomas dives on a loose ball. Where the smallest guy on the floor getting his hands dirty. Thomas and Hardeman. And possession favoring the Huskies. This is action around the glass. Gantz, a starter all last year, now coming off the bench. Telling Lorenzo Romar he's ready to go. Benoit Overton in the game, too, number one. When he's in, Isaiah Thomas goes to the two guard, so he doesn't have to work quite so hard handling the basketball. Here's Thomas setting up Overton. Slicing through the defense, hits the floater. And Washington retakes the lead. Boy, they've got some athletic guys on this team. Quickness and length for the UW guys. Six aren't answered for the Huskies. 12.47 to play before halftime. Here's Darrington Hobson. Boy, what a start to this game. Hobson bullet pass and across for Martinez. Good seal inside. McDonald did off balance three. Rebounded in tight. That one misses everything. It was Will Brown a chance. And a rare missed shot for either team. Talked about what a down year it was for the Pac-10, but boy, this is the time you want to be repping yourself well. Both Cal and the Huskies advancing. Austin Turner in, finds Thomas. May have jumped a little bit early. The depth of Washington already evident in this game. Nice drive and finish by Nate Gard. Nine players have been in the game. Well point in Sacramento. Here comes Overton, a blur down the paint. Answering for the Huskies. Get out of here! 94 feet! Well, points certainly not at a premium early in this game. Look at Garth answer right back. And that's against the defensive stalwart over to The lane open like the Red Sea. Nobody home. Game tied at 19 of 11.40 to play before halftime. Thomas lost his footing, maintains possession. Here's Paul Dexter. They better fix that wet spot. Overton driving, deflected off. And now they say it will be Washington ball. First to timeout with 11.29 left, first half. Here in San Jose, we're tied at 19, 11 minutes to play first half. Hobson finds McDonald. Here comes Thomas pushing. Thomas, the diminutive point guard, switches to the left in midair. McDonald came back in from out of bounds, and the Huskies will have it with 29 to shoot. Mm, the lefty goes hard. Gets hacked a couple of times, no call, loose ball. They will keep it. There's Steve Alford. First trip to the NCAA tournament as New Mexico's head coach. Trying to do what no coach has ever done in the history of this program, take the Lobos to the Sweet 16. Tom Dexter taking Brown off the dribble. Soft touch in tight. They love to isolate Quincy in the middle third of the floor. When he drives, there's no help available. That's how he won the game against Marquette Thursday afternoon. Six points for Pondexter. 
Huskies 21, New Mexico 19, and a blocking foul call. There's the coaching file on offer. He won the 87 National Championship as a player, and then he also wins the gold medal as a player in Los Angeles in the 84 Olympics, which was the last time our Olympic team was all college players. He's got a couple of nice rings, wouldn't you say? Had a great run, head coach at Iowa. Only guy to actually do that. Seven consecutive winning seasons in Iowa City. Two big, big ten titles. Come up on the midway mark of the first half. This is the Reese Gowdy. Baseline sealed off. There's an outside three from Nate Garth. Wasn't close, but a whistle here against the Huskies. A reminder that coming up on AT&T at the half, Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, and Seth Davis will take you out for a live look at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament. Plus, the guys will get you caught up on all the latest tournament news and an AT&T Naismith watch update. It's all coming up on AT&T at the half. Barrington Hobson, a long three. They Both made, teams now cooled off. Yes, exactly. They made three out of their first four. They've missed four in a row. Overton trying to sneak through the defense. And it's knocked out of bounds off of Pondexter. Interesting contrast in style in this game. Washington loves the push, the dribble, the layup, and of course, New Mexico loves the three. I wonder if it's any indication of how Lorenzo Romar and uh, Steve Alford were as players. Steve, of course, was a great shooter, one of the best free throw shooters ever in the history of college basketball, top 10. And Lorenzo Mo Romar was a great player as well. Alford talked yesterday about their history together. They served alongside one another on the NABC military team. Let's work on the defensive glass inside. But Brown couldn't put it home. Pondexter, early offense for Washington. Pondexter, contact will shoot two with 9.14 left in his first half. Get the ball down the floor quickly. Get it to him on the baseline and let him go to work. Pondexter is a great take it to the basket player. There's Lorenzo Romar looking to take this Huskies team to the Sweet 16 for the third time in his career. Advanced to that point in 05 and then in 06. Offered yesterday, Bob talked about the great respect he has for Romar. Of course, two former players, as you alluded to. Steve said he's just one of the guys I've always followed from afar, watched their scores. I've always had an interest in what Romar has done with the Huskies. Alford's had a pretty good run of his own. <laughs> he sure has. She has revitalized this program here in New Mexico. New Mexico averages nearly 14,000 people per game at the pit in Albuquerque. It is an extremely tough place to play, and it is also a high-altitude place. The one time we were playing there, and there's a big sign as the, as the visitor's locker room, 3,000 feet, whatever it is. My guys asked me about it. I said, that's just outside. <laughs> Anything to play the mind game <laughs> with those visiting teams. <laughs> Rock continues to run. Five seconds to shoot. Here's the Reese Gary. Spins inside. What a move to the bucket. Finishes with a left hand. That's why he is first team all Mountain West. Two-point game. Rebounded weak side by Hardiman. Washington 23, New Mexico 21. Spiro Vitas, Bob Wenzel, our entire CBS crew from San Jose. Hobson maneuvers inside. His pass deflected. It's loose and taken by Holiday. Here comes Abdul Gaddy, three on two. Ruffles right side, Brian Ammoning, and he finishes inside. And Washington's lead is bumped to four points. That is a 6'9", 240-pound center sprinting the length of the floor. That is tough to keep up with. Gary on the drive. Mr. Strength as a point guard. Terrific left hand by the junior. And then filling the lanes, organizing the break, and finishing is Matthew Bryan Ammoning. Brian Ammoning so impressive on Thursday night. 11 points in addition to three blocks in their win over Marquette. 
There's a whistle blown here. New Mexico will have it when we come back, but they're down four with under eight left in the first half. A look at our game summary here in San Jose with under eight minutes to play before halftime. Quincy Pondexter, no slow start on this day. Eight, eight points has missed only one of his four attempts. He is fun to watch, isn't he? I, I tell you, you know, he's got the long arms and long legs. He's quick all over the place. 11 for 19, if you're doing your math, is 58% from the field for Washington. That's why they have the lead. The three-point shooting was hot early for New Mexico, Spiro. They had three for four but they've been 0 for 6 since. So what uh, Lorenzo Romar did was say to his guys, be up on them in their grill, force them to put the ball on the floor and drive. Substitution to freshman out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Chad Adams is on for the Lobos. And Scott Suggs has checked in for the Huskies. This is A.J. Hardiman. Backs down Brian Abedin. Turnaround shot, barely get to the rim. And UW has it. Notice no double team. The guys stayed home on their men at the three-point line. Abdul Gaddy banks it down. Count the basket. And Washington builds on its lead. The ability to take the ball to the basket. Abdul Gaddy did it early. Now he comes in here and uses the glass to soften his body motion toward the end line. Nice play by the young guy. Bob, this young man, the, the one of the youngest players in Division I basketball, turned 18 this past January. I'll tell you, he, and, and, you know, he was a great, great high school player, McDonald's All-American and all that stuff. No points the other night, four already here. Gary trying to answer, follows the miss. And possession here for the Lobos, a pushing foul charge to Isaiah Thomas. The biggest lead of the day for the Huskies, 28 to 21. They are getting it in transition. I mean, they are a blur out here in person. It's a purple blur just flying down the floor every time they get a rebound. And Bob, that was the second against Thomas. Decision to keep him in here. Yeah, I, I, he's got to get him out. And there's Martinez. Fires <laughs> mid-range. Look at the vertical by Holiday. Martinez knocks away the pass and the Huskies will have it. I'm surprised Lorenzo hasn't taken him out. He has the uh, the ability, watch this rebound. Watch out, you might hit your head on the rim, Justin. You know, he can, he's he got Benoit Overton and he's also got Abdul Gaddy, both of who can play. Thomas stays in and Romar's gamble pays off. It's a 10 point Huskies lead, Alfred wants a timeout. Isaiah pointed to Coach Romar and said, thank you very much for leaving me in there. Well, the Washington team that struggled to get through a Pac-10 conference during the regular season has been reborn here in San Jose. Indeed, Lorenzo Romar has got his guys cooking on all cylinders. They were 11-7 in the regular Pac-10 conference, finished third behind Cal and Arizona State. And that guy right there, Isaiah Thomas, has two fouls. And that guy right there has to decide whether to leave him in or not. Decides to leave him in, and it certainly paid off in the short run. He just hit a three. Spiro Dita's Bob Wenzel, our entire CBS crew from San Jose. New Mexico dealing with some adversity now, down 10. I've been outscored 12 to 2 over the past couple of minutes. If I'm Therese Gary, I'm taking Isaiah Thomas to the hole. And here is Gary right on cue. Makes this an eight-point game. Thomas could not afford to get a third foul. Lorenzo has a luxury. You know, he's got Gaddy and Overton who can play together in the backcourt. Doesn't have to do this. Scott Suggs checked by Martinez. Thomas turns, shoots a three. Good. Isaiah Thomas, born in Tacoma, Washington, has given UW an 11-point lead. Gary off target, rebounded by Holiday. Gary finds Holiday on the wing. Pull up baseline jumper. 
Rebounded by Hobson. Hobson Bob is quieted down, hit that shot early in the game. Only three points. They find Gary, wide open. Hardeman rebounds. Shuffles to Martinez. Left-handed shot swatted by Brian Hammonick. Thoughtfully. Here comes Thomas. Hammonick catches in a crowd. They knock it away. And Hobson has it for New Mexico. You are right about Hobson. He has been conspicuously absent in other than the passing area. Made one shot, has been hesitant to try to shoot. Here in San Jose, this red-hot Washington Huskies team has opened up its largest lead today, 11 points. This third seeded New Mexico side looking to advance to its first ever Sweet 16. And right now it's in trouble. And Washington has done it with the fast break. Their speed has been awesome out here. They're running the floor. They have played great defense on the threes, which is New Mexico's chief weapon under Steve Alford. Only three of 11. Alford wearing his lucky red jacket today. Hobson was great against Montana. Big numbers there. Not so much in this game. Leads the team in scoring, rebounds, and assists. And a great effort there on the offensive tip try by Hardeman. Couldn't put it in. Under five minutes left before halftime and an 11-point lead for the Huskies. Here's Brian Amonick with a step-back hook attempt. Out of bounds, last touch by Washington. Substitution, Nelson Turner will come get Holiday. And Benoit Overton will come on for Abdul Gaddy. Overton, a great defender. Isaiah Thomas now can move over to the two-guard spot. He does not have to guard Gary. That's a good thing because Gary can get him his third foul because he's so good at taking it to the basket. Marco Lobo's shot has gone away here, shooting just under 30%. There's Gary a little leaner with his left hand. Tough shot. Here comes Thomas. Mexico getting back. They leave Turner, however. Nine-point game. Thomas left open, shoots a three, no good. And a foul here against the Huskies. Well, the Huskies are great in transition and have been in this game. However, when they get into the five-on-five, five, not quite as effective. Right here, an offensive foul over the back. We will shoot at the other end. One in one situation, 17 foul against Washington. That's the second against Pondexter, so now both he and Thomas with two fouls. Well, it'll be interesting to see what Lorenzo Romar does. He left in Thomas because Thomas so fiery he wanted to stay in the game. Pondexter had a great second half on Thursday with two fouls for him. It'll be interesting to see whether he leaves his two most productive guys out there with two fouls with this much time left in the first half. And Bob Lobo's not doing themselves any favors at the free throw line. 0 for 5 on the day. Oh, that's a good one. Four minutes to play. Martinez here checking Pondexter. Playing with two fouls. Pondexter double. And here it's against New Mexico. Timeout taken in San Jose. A nine-point lead for the Huskies. Stay with us. Well, here in San Jose, that young lady quietly confident in her Huskies. They have played like anything but on 11 seats so far in this game. Well, when you think of the Huskies, think of speed. They are going 94 feet end-to-end. -end. Drives to the basket, crashing the offensive boards. Isaiah Thomas with the depth pass here. He's got nine points and four assists. Benoit Overton goes end-to-end. -end. The speed is something to behold. Take a look at these numbers. 11 for 19 and three for six. That is big-time offense right there. Different story right now for New Mexico. They started this game hitting six of their first nine shots. Since then, they've gone just five for 21. The big guys right now for New Mexico, what you would expect is Darrington Hobson and Roman Martinez. But so far, it's been Darius Gary doing all of the damage. He's being a very aggressive point guard scoring. The other guys not quite as much involved as they should be. Pondexter finds Overton in the corner. Baseline jumper from Thomas in and out. 
For a back attempt, no good. That was Darnell Gantz with the chance. So New Mexico has it down nine with under four minutes left before halftime. See if the Lobos try to go in closer to the basket. They've missed six straight threes. Here's McDonald in the paint. Pondexter muscles his way to the rebound and a jump ball call. Romar thought his guy Pondexter was fouled. Possession favoring New Mexico. Great play by Philip McDonald. Goes after this ball well without fouling. Guys get tied up. I like the call. No sense giving a, you know anybody a foul on a play like that. Notice nobody guarding the inbounder. He could throw it off a guy's back and get it back to himself. Hobson against Turner. Turner just lodges it loose, dives on it, passes to Pondexter. A run out, back to Pondexter for the forceful finish. And New Mexico's lead back to 11. They can fill the lanes big time. 10 points for Quincy Pondexter. Gary forcing his way to the cup will have a chance at a three-point play. You want to see a fast break, a thing of beauty? Dive on the floor, get the outlet, fill the lanes, give it up, and get it back. That is a thing of beauty. You like fast break basketball, you're going to watch Lorenzo Romar's teams and enjoy them. At the old high school drill, just up and down the floor, the three guys <laughs> passing back and forth. Textbook finish in the open floor by UW. And you've got to be fit to play in that kind of a system. Meantime here, the officials looking at the instant replay. Bob, what are we looking at here? I'm not sure. I, you know, I mean, Gary took the ball to the basket. Maybe they're checking who the foul was on. But Gary took the ball to the basket. I mean, he has been the answer for New Mexico the entire game. The guys in the purple jerseys are really being fast. Now, right here, Gary takes the ball hard to the basket. There's some contact here by Vinoy Overton. I'm not sure if, if that's what they're looking at or not. Boy, he is a powerful guard, isn't he? Strong. The first recruit for Steve Alford. Gary born in Elkhart, Indiana. Those huge free throws down the stretch of their game here against Montana Thursday. And we're told now they're trying to determine who will shoot the free throw. Perhaps some contact away from the ball. And the foul was called inside oh. against Hobson. I see that so now. They're trying to determine which of those Huskies big men will shoot the free throw. So Hobson charged for the foul. Yeah, Hobson was first. Hobson was on the weak side, Spiro, trying to get the rebound if there was one. Very interesting call. You know, it certainly wasn't on the shooter. One in one situation, each team with seven fouls. 306 to play first half. Here's Elston Turner. He has had a great postseason. Four of five from three point range on Thursday. And in the Pac 10 championship, poked the ball away from Jerome Randall in the closing seconds to preserve the victory for them. Turner did not take many free throws during the regular season. There's 28 of them. Sophomore born in Missouri City, Texas. Great stroke. Just like his dad, Austin Turner, who played at Ole Miss and in the NBA for many years. You think shooting is a genetically linked characteristic? You know, I think it may be, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Steve Alford's kid. They're going to be pretty good shooters. <laughs> Under three minutes to play first half. Washington, an 11-point lead over the Lobos. Here's Gary. Trying to shuffle the heart of him, knocked back into Gary's hands. Martinez left open. It's loose and taken by Overton. Here's Poindexter. The ball fake finds Turner. One dribble, sets up his own shot, gets it to go, and is fouled. Elston, they love you in Washington. Four for five from three-point range against Marquette. And right here, measure it. The pump fake, the follow-through, and the foul. Woo! And Bob, the unselfishness by Pondexter, he had a pretty open shot himself, but he knew Turner was even more open. 
And that's Elston Turner's specialty. Indeed. And Lorenzo Romar talked to me about him being able to put the ball on the floor better than in the past. He used to be just a spot up guy. Now he's got that one dribble and pull up much, much more effective. Free throw no good. This suddenly has ballooned to a 14 point lead for the Huskies. It's one thing if the Lobos Thursday night slow start, they were able to come back against Montana, but a different type of challenge here against this red hot Huskies team. That was a slow paced game. This is a fast paced game. Watt continues to run, 13 to shoot. Here's Gary. Again, gets to the rim. Gary banged up, lands awkwardly on his knee. Boy, that young man has been knocked around here over the past couple of days. He is so strong, taking the ball to the basket. A lot of contact right here. He had a stitch in his side against Montana, but still took over the game late. And right here, notice how he jumps to the side, so the foul is not on him. Well, well done. And back in the old days, they used to wear the knee pads. That's right. None on him. Bud here. Gary looks like he's okay. We'll shoot the free throw. Gary has been really the lone source of consistent offense today. 12 points. At 15 against Montana the other night. Big time. He's taken over this game. And you know why a point guard do that against this type of team? You're feeling pressure and speed and all that. So you've got to break them down on the dribble. You're going to turn the ball over. Huge three-point play from Gary. Brings the Lobos within 11. 3-2 zone this time. Longest guy out front. Hobson will make it difficult to pass it from side to side because of his length. Turner, deep three. Inside Holiday, the rebound. Knocked out of bounds by Gary, and it belongs to Washington. Credit Brian Ammoning also for keeping that alive. They are doing great work on the offensive boards here. Bob, it's such a critical last couple of minutes here before halftime. New Mexico desperately trying to build some momentum going into the locker room. Both Paul Dexter and Thomas on the bench. Wisely, in my estimation. Turner, got it! Six points from the same spot in three possessions. Elston Turner, eight points off the bench. Gary knew the contact was coming, blocked on the interior. And Turner has it. Holiday. Ammoning, what a play to save it in the corner. He's got some skills for a guy his size. Seven foot four inch wingspan. Can run the floor. Block shots. Good hands. Ryan Ammoning, born in London. Shot clock down to seven. Here's Turner. And scored UW's last eight points. Two to shoot. Turner from Tacoma. <laughs> Knocked out of bounds. 35.5 <laughs> to play before halftime. You know, I like that shot because the guy is hot. And, and you get it to the guy who has a hot hand. Doesn't matter whether it's from Tacoma or Sacramento. He still was confident. The boys from the Pacific Northwest, red hot here in San Jose. Representing the Pac-10 Conference has been incredibly so far. Looking to advance to the Sweet 16 for the third time under that man, Lorenzo Romar. He has done a great job with this team. They took a lot of heat early in the year because they were highly ranked and then dropped out of the rankings. And they really seemed justified when they won the Pac-10. It was elation city for them. And boy, they have gone on and they are playing with reckless abandon. If one, three, one zone. If you've just joined us, this game was tied at 19. Since that point, New Mexico has been outscored 25-11. Final 15 seconds. The Lobos desperate for some points here before halftime. This is the Reese Gary. Seven seconds. Gary against Overton. Banks it home. One second. And that will do it. Boy, a huge play by Gary. The junior carrying New Mexico's offense down the stretch. So physically strong. He just bumps guards off him. Uses the glass to get into it. Our score at halftime, Washington 44, New Mexico 32. We'll send you to New York.
after this message and a word from your local station. Good job by Randy Bennett's team, man, advancing where they have. And you just saw the three-point shooting on the screen there. New Mexico started well, but have missed nine straight from long distance. 15-19 remaining. New Mexico has it down 17 points. Hobson trying to draw in the second defender, and the Lobos turn it over. The only guy that helps on defense is the center, Matthew Bryan Amman. Everybody else guards their man one-on-one, -on -one, and it's their responsibility to take him. You are not supposed to help if you play for Washington. And because of that, they can guard the three-point line much, 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 much better. And that's why they started off hot, and they haven't made a three-point shot you know, for, for the, almost the entire game, save the first three minutes of the game. New Mexico was down 12 at halftime, if you've just joined us. Huskies inbound to Pondexter. Double. Thomas again. The young man feeling it. The rebound up over the glass, and it belongs to New Mexico. All of Isaiah's points, field goal-wise, have come from beyond the three-point arc in this game. When he penetrates, he has become a passer, mostly. Thomas continuing to play with that broken bone in his left hand. Soft move from Tacoma. Here's McDonald. Drags his pivot foot. And the low goes with back-to-back -back giveaways. Washington is making New Mexico play out of their comfort zone. Trying to get guys to put the ball on the floor and go the distance from a long way. They are not accustomed to that. Steve Alferbach just looked at Phil McDonald and asked him if he's okay. Uncharacteristic ball handling mistake there. It's batted out. Boy, the Huskies just making all the little plays right now. Cricket to the ball, aren't they? There's Holiday. Lob to Brian Amity. They front again inside. And the same result. The Huskies a 19-point lead. Good night. Wow. Matthew Brian Ameting, the junior from London. Continuing his stellar tournament this season. 11 points, three blocks Thursday against Marquette. He's got 12 points today. Lobo's trying to answer. McDonald the rebound, and it's stolen by Holiday. Again, the length coming into play for UW. Oh, what a find. Inside to Pondexter. Five on three, they're not going to mess that up. Washington has taken this game over. A 21-point lead. Well, the winner of this game advances to Syracuse, New York, to the Sweet 16. And right now, that team is looking like the Washington Huskies. Well, if you front Brian Amonen, he's going to get the ball close to the basket. And then the fast hands, very evident in this game throughout. They organize the break. Nobody charges into anybody. And they finish the five on three in nice fashion. This is a good team. They play well together. And they are fast and long. Bob, the other interesting aspect of this game is Mountain West, of course, against the Pacific 10 Conference. And you know, there was talk this year that the Mountain had kind of moved by the Pac-10. It was a strong Mountain West season, New Mexico and BYU, and right down the list, San Diego State. Interesting scenario here with the Huskies repping very well for the Pac-10. Thank you very much. <laughs> one in one situation. It's charged to Darrington Hobson. My mistake, not a one in one. New Mexico still a couple of fouls to give. Pretty good it's foul third right. against Hobson. Yeah, pretty good foul right there. Uh, you know, a break up the fast break by fouling instead of an easy basket. The Huskies playing with such control, such poise. Pondexter turns some contact. And it's cleared by Hobson. Still plenty of time. 13 minutes on the clock. Nice find. Now look that way. Right idea. But Thomas with the steal. Holiday a three. Good. It is raining threes on the New Mexico Lobos. The only offense New Mexico is able to muster is number five. In transition, find your man, share the basketball. Holiday can make him. 
He only shoots 25% from three-point range, but confidence is oozing all out of the San Jose Pavilion here. Lobo's inbound to Roman Martinez. Well, he has been quiet in this game, just one parade shooting. Hobson's pass again is picked off. Steve Alford, meantime, has to be wondering what has gone wrong with his team today. One of those days, one of those days. It happens, and unfortunately, it's happening to him on a day where they would be loving to advance. The people, no doubt, glued to their TV sets back in Albuquerque, hoping that New Mexico can come back here. Martinez with the reverse layer. Well, there's two challenges in the game right now. The challenge for Washington is to maintain their focus and not think that the game is over. I mean, there's 12 minutes left to go. That's a long time. The challenge for New Mexico, of course, is to find a scorer other than Gary. Off and under move, Amening misses point blank. Martinez has it, took a whack to the face. Looks like he's okay. Boy, he's cut now. A deep cut on the left side of Martinez's face. So we'll get a timeout as the blood pours out of Martinez's face. Let's go to New York and Greg Umble. Here in San Jose, a 20-point game. New Mexico trying to get right back to work. Here comes Overton. Right to the cup, scoops in with a right hand. New Mexico running out of time, under 12 minutes left. The ball handling has been superb for Washington, Spiro. They only have three turnovers in the game, and on top of that, they have 17 assists on 25 baskets. And look at the fast break discrepancy so far. Roman Martinez, meantime, whacked in the face a moment ago, trying to get his cut above his left eye stitched up. Was hit by his own man inadvertently before the timeout. And it appears as though they have brought Martinez into the New Mexico locker room. This is Nate Garth at the free throw line, 11-29 remaining. New Mexico, Bob, is one for seven at the free throw line. It has not been their night in lots of facets of the game, and that's the most glaring. Steve Alford looking on the head coach. You just wonder what you say to your players. Do you get aggressive? Or are you encouraging? It's interesting to see how Alford handles things here down the stretch. Well, he could put himself in. That would help their scoring, I can tell you that. That's Elston Turner on the step back. Turner's got 10 off the bench. That's Darius Gary, left it short, put back inside. That's Will Brown. The Lobo still down by 21 points. Well, I think Gary answered your question. Unfortunately for him, he's been doing this the whole game. It looks like he's running out of gas a little bit. They've got to drive the ball to the basket, send four to the offensive glass, keep the ball alive, and make this a scrap game. Nate Garth, the sophomore from Sacramento. Not far from his hometown here. Here's Gary. Black clock at 14 for Garth. Washington, very strong interior defense. Seven to shoot. Holiday staying on the floor, got a piece of it. What defense by Washington, and they'll get it back. What a great defensive play. Mr. Holiday, we admire your defense, and so does your coach, as well as your teammates. Pac-10, all defense, and you said it right, Spiro. Kept his feet on the pump fake, and he's so long, he could stay a step away from guys and still challenge their shot. Wow. Got arms for days, three blocks for Holiday. Here's Thomas, gets the friendly roll. Thomas looked like he turned his ankle a little bit, that one on the way down. we have to relace those Air Jordans. Looking very sleek in those black sneakers. Nice drive and finish by Derese Gary. Well, he's been the bright spot for the Lobos. Overton finds Pondexter, missed the bank, but will step to the line for two. You rarely have seen this New Mexico team on its heels the way they have been tonight. A team that just ran through the Mountain West Conference. 
They did, of course, come up short in the conference tournament. 30 victories coming into today. Talked about some of the history that they have had to deal with. All the success that they have had, Bob, never have advanced to the Sweet 16. Well, and, and uh, you know, they were in the Western Athletic Conference. Now they're in Mountain West. The program is going in the right direction. They got the right guy coaching. They got absolutely terrific talent. And most of these guys are coming back, except for Roman Martinez, who is a fan favorite in Albuquerque. Three straight seasons of 20 plus wins for the Lobos. That's good stuff. The second time that's happened in the history of the program. Great guard, 9.27 to play. Mark pushes towards the rim. It's tapped up and in by Hobson. Well, that's the thing that they have to do when you ask me. Drive the ball to the basket, crash the hand. And Jay Cook will take care of that. Right. And no matter what happens on this possession, unless there's a foul. Now suddenly just cannot get a defensive stop. No. And, and you know what happens when you're trying to claw your way back in. You know, your legs get heavy at this time in the game. You've expended a lot of energy. You're playing against a team that's much quicker than you are. You're retreating on D every possession. If you don't, they get a layup. It takes a lot of energy. Thomas had it knocked off of his hands. It rolls out of bounds, and it belongs to the Lobos. And we've talked about such a loyal fan base for this New Mexico program. Well represented here in San Jose this week, making the trip from Albuquerque. And right now they're standing behind the Lobos bench, imploring their guys to make one final push. Here's Hobson, shoots over two, and it's cleared by Pondexter. Pondexter against two at the other end, blocked by Will Brown. Here comes Hobson. Hobson, nine points on the day, extending into the basket and just drops it in with a left hand. Boy, that's a thing of beauty. <laughs> it is. He just unfolded. We haven't seen any of that in this game whatsoever. And you have to wonder about whether the fall in the game Thursday is affecting his wrist. We know they did an x-ray, and it's not broken or anything of that nature, but his effectiveness in this game has not been normal. Way below his standard. A Pondexter just took it away from Will Brown. And it's 70 to 49, Washington. Woo! The Huskies showing no signs of slowing down. Pondexter has an engine, doesn't he? Looks like he could go all day. 18 points for Pondexter. Again, they stuff him inside. Gant has it. Now for Noy Overton. Continues to run 15 seconds. Lorenzo Romar is bunch trying to milk that clock as far down as they can. Lead, so it's a two possession. It's the middle of the floor. Cross over dribble. Turns, finds Overton for three. Offensive rebound. Gant is blocked and fouled by Will Brown. Gant's doing it at both ends. <laughs> Shocking finish in Oklahoma. The reverberations of that final will certainly be felt for the next couple of hours and days. Northern Iowa knocking off the number one overall seed to the Jayhawks 
are all done. An unbelievable, uh, great story. Strength on the part of Northern Iowa and the guys from Michigan State and Maryland, their eyes are lighting up because they're gonna play one another for the right to play against Northern Iowa. Man, that is a shocker. Well, Bob, that's the first reaction, but if you really sit back and think about it, it's just in line with what this entire year has been about. No number one has been safe. Anyone can beat anyone on every given day. It's sure proven that way, isn't it? It's an upside-down season in college basketball right from the start. And that has continued so far in this NCAA tournament. Makes the tournament even more exciting. Matthew Bryan Amining. If you've just joined us, Washington has owned New Mexico right from the start. A 21-point lead with 6.35 left to play in regulation. Well, you know, now that Kansas is out as the number one seed, your thoughts go to the other number one seeds. Can anybody beat Kentucky in their part? Can anybody beat Duke? Syracuse has a very tough game against Gonzaga tomorrow, and of course they are playing without Ono Walker, to my knowledge, and that's a big, big difference for them. The winner of this game, meantime, will travel to Syracuse, New York, next weekend in Sweet 16. And the Huskies can taste it now, 6.22 to play. And New Mexico came in the number three seed in the East region. Highly touted. 30 victories coming in. 14 coming in the Mountain West Conference. One and one situation for both teams. First free throw here is good. NCAA March Madness on Demand is streaming every game from the NCAA Basketball Championship online for free. Watch any game from the tournament live at NCAA.com. Here in San Jose, Spiro Dinas, Bob Wenzel, the Reese Gary on the dribble drive. Get to the basket. They'll need a whole lot more with that game from down 20. He has been the bright spot on this team. First team all-conference player along with Darrington Hobson from New Mexico's team. Larry scored 22 points, averages only 12 a game. Here's Holiday. <laughs> Kept alive, boy, that has summed up this day. Isaiah Thomas, smallest guy on the floor. Rebounded by McDonald. The Tumba Lobos in the open floor, that's Jamal Fenton. Offensive rebound, Gary, and he's got 24 points. Lorenzo Romar, sensing maybe a lack of focus here. It's an 18-point game, five and a half left in Northern California. Well, the 11 seeded Washington Huskies, an 18-point lead here in San Jose. Steve Alford, meantime, has to be wondering what's gone wrong for the Lobos. There's Lorenzo Romar, two sweet 16 appearances as Washington coach. Well, just had, has had everything working today for his Huskies. Well, they have been impressive indeed, and they have been impressive in the second half of the season. They have won 13 out of their last 15 games, including eight straight. A Thursday win here over Marquette in a tightly contested game. Thomas the steal. And the foul against Benton. Well, you know, the, the, the timeout, you, you said it very well. Right here, the defense, always there for Washington. Long-armed players that get close to the ground. Lorenzo Romar took a timeout because he did sense his team was losing focus late in the game. Fatigue sets in. You've got a big lead. The other team does not want to be embarrassed, so they're going to take the ball to the basket strongly and your guys have to stay in front of their man like they have been the entire game Thomas sets himself second free throw pops off 73 54 lead for the Huskies once he point that to Darrington Hobson waiting to check into the table Reese Gary gonna keep his team within a respectable margin now 
Thomas finds Scott Suggs for the three, and he wins it home. Talk about depth. Suggs, the sophomore from Washington, Missouri. Here in San Jose, it has been all Washington. A 19-point lead over the three-seeded Lobos from New Mexico. The Huskies looking like an offensive juggernaut. Eight straight wins. This game got away from New Mexico early. And the Huskies have not taken their foot off the gas pedal. The speed and athleticism of Washington has been a factor in several areas of the game. Number one, their defense. The threes went down early for New Mexico, and since that time, they have really not gotten any good looks except that last play bar by Martinez. Their depth has been very, very useful on the offensive glass. Benoit Overton comes in and speeds things up. Just getting back against them is a major accomplishment. They score so quickly, they have been extremely impressive in the second part of this season, and especially in this game against the number eight ranked team in the country. It's been very, very impressive. Three-point shooting is there. They've got two star players in Isaiah Thomas and Quincy Pondexter. Those two guys can take people off the dribble. What a day for that man. Four of his five baskets coming from three-point distance. Isaiah Thomas playing in front of his parents here today in San Jose. Only 5'8 and only a sophomore. He is a spark plug. Oh, man. First team all Pac-10. MVP of the Pac-10 tournament was Isaiah. Well, the Huskies proved Thursday that they can come from behind, down 15 in the second half to beat Marquette. And right now they are playing and proving that they can hold a big lead. What a finish inside. Boy, that man has had an incredible first two rounds. Hasn't bowled anyone over with statistics, but boy, has he been strong inside. Matthew Bryan Amening runs so fast, he tires out the center on your team. Lock continues to run. Mexico's season on its last legs now, 319 and counting. Out of bounds off of New Mexico. They're revving up the engines in the Pacific Northwest destination, Syracuse, New York. Well, it has been a one-sided affair. If you've just joined us here in San Jose, Washington just moments away from a berth into the Sweet 16. Well, big numbers for them off turnovers. Their defense has been excellent. Their speed has been wonderful. Their outside shooting, they've made eight threes in this game. The superstars, Isaiah Thomas, has come through, as has Quincy Pondexter. They have been a team on a mission, and their defense of New Mexico's threes have been fabulous. And take a look at this scoring. You talk about some balance. Man, they are getting it done. Doing their own Murray State impression. <laughs> Everyone getting involved in the party. 78-59. Abdul Gatton inside. Ryan Amiting on the catch. Coaches shuffling guys in and out. Tyrese Brashears will shoot the free throws. So 3.05 to play. We're in San Jose, Spiro Deed is Bob Wenzel. Shears misses the first. People still trying to collect their thoughts after what just went down moments ago in Oklahoma. The number one seed overall in the tournament, Kansas, ousted by Northern Iowa. And as Quincy Pondexter gets a well-deserved hand. Pondexter, 18 points, 7 of 12 shooting. He to has go along with his five rebounds. His last three games, the Pac-10 tournament championship game, fabulous. The other night against Marquette, fabulous. Hit the shot to win the game, and he was awesome in this game, too. What a player. Who's down with Hobson? Lobo's down 19 points. Hobson showing his toughness today, playing with that bulky left wrist. Does not had his usual impact. A nice decision by Gaddy will come out and reset. 
the death of subs, he can launch threes. Turn around, shot in the paint. Clarence Trent, the freshman from Harbor, Washington. Not getting a lot of minutes this year. Looks like he knows his way around the lane. Down to 222 to play. The Washington Huskies, a team that has not lost since mid-February. A home loss to the Trojans in Pac-10 play. And they are closing in on a ninth consecutive win. Well, Bob, Gary, you look, you look at the faces on the bench, Bob. The smiles all around. In the meantime, the agony on the other side. It always happens that way. Last game of the year for the loser. That's what makes this tournament so great. Survive in advance. So now the final exit to the season. Well, Juan well, Martinez had to get stitched up earlier, four stitches. They changed his jersey, usually wears number 30. He's had to finish the game wearing number 41. And what a career. Palming to a close for Martinez here in San Jose. A beloved player. Averaged 3, 7, 11, and now 14 in his freshman, sophomore, junior years. The leader and the emotional compass of this team. Here's Turner pulling up. Final two minutes now. 20-point lead for the Washington Huskies. This is Nate Garth. Down low for Shears defending against Brown. Turnaround shot. And the Huskies have it. The Huskies will advance. They'll fly to Syracuse, New York. Cross-country trip. And you wonder what team can beat this Husky side as well as they've played of late. Well, they're going to play either Missouri or West Virginia, both of those teams. Missouri, a pressing team, so if they and Washington play one another, the game's likely to be in the 90s. And, of course, West Virginia, they can play five, six, nine guys at the same time. They are one tough group. This defense inside. The Huskies, Bob, during the season, two games against the AP's top 25. They lost to Georgetown, beat Texas A&M. Both of those games coming in December. Well, now the Huskies fans getting a kick out of this. It'll be Brendan Shearer checking in. The guy at the end of the bench. And here he comes. Elston Turner done for the day. Shearer, the Monroe, Washington native, sophomore player. Start to the meantime, we'll make it Will Brown misses the second. They have a nickname for him. They call him the, the, the cigar because Red Auerbach used to put in a cigar in his mouth when the, the game was completed. A lot of victory cigars are going to be lit up tonight in the Pacific Northwest, that's for sure. Here's Sharon setting himself up, and he'll shoot two free throws. <laughs> Shearer gets to A, play in the NCAA tournament, and B, have an opportunity to score in the NCAA tournament. Think his teammates like him? You bet they do. Well, that's a lot of pressure for the young man. Here in San Jose, 66 seconds left on the clock. The Washington Huskies continuing their torrid pace. Outside three. And too little, too late for New Mexico. That's Jamal Fenton from B. 80 to 64, Washington. So Washington comes to San Jose and they beat Marquette on a Quincy Pondexter shot with 1.7 seconds to go. And then they play the number 18 in the nation and whack them. Their speed and teamwork and passing all evident in this game. Nate Garth into the corner. Three-pointer by Chad Adams off target. Knocked away. 
Shearer has it, the fan favorite here in San Jose. Now to 20 seconds. The Washington Huskies, an underachieving team for much of the season. And boy, are they peaking at just the right time. The Pac-10 champions continue their winning streak. It's now at nine games. And the Huskies have punched their ticket to the Sweet 16. Your final score from San Jose, Washington 82, and New Mexico 64. For Bob Wenzel, this is Spiro Dina saying so long from San Jose.